Hi, everyone. Welcome to this month's episode of Life on the Edge. This month, I talked to Mark Plettenberg from Login VSI about the very important topic of user experience. I really hope you enjoy the episode and feel free to post any comments. Thanks very much. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the IGEL uh, VOD. Uh, my name is James O'Regan, and this morning we have Mark Plattenberg from Login VSI. Uh, and we're going to discuss uh, user experience and, you know, in uh, end user computing. So welcome, Mark. Can you give us a quick introduction? Yeah, thanks so much. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, quick introduction. Uh, I hope most people have have seen me uh, sometimes by now. Unfortunately, we can't do real life events anymore, but uh, but still. Um, I work at Login VSI where I'm, my official title is I'm a user experience expert, which means I've broken many, many enterprise IT environments in my career professionally. Uh, I've been asked to, to do so. Uh, doing that, I've uh, learned a thing or two how you can make these environments better, faster, cheaper, uh, all of the above. Mm -hmm. And uh, we try to capture those things in, uh, in software to make sure that uh, people get uh, the end user experience that they deserve. Cool. Thanks very much. Um, so obviously, you know, we're in the middle of a pandemic. We've seen this huge shift to uh, home working. And, you know, at, at first it was all about just getting people up and running at home. And now we're seeing it kind of obviously it, it's it's looking like if you see all the figures coming out, you know, 30 percent want to go back 20 percent. So this work from home is a, is a permanent thing now. And now we have to start looking at things like, you know, user experience. And it, it's not just about being able to connect. It's about having a good user experience. Um, so just want to get what's your thoughts on that and, and where we're at in terms of user experience. Yeah, user experience is a, is a, is a very broad term. So it's, it's a very open question. And, you know, back in the day for me, user experience used to be how fast is your computer? How fast can you make it, right? Turning up voltages, adding uh, uh, more cooling to it just to get that extra squeeze out of it. Um, enterprise IT, a little bit different, right? We started with the same game there, but how much can I put on this box? But now we're really seeing that user experience uh, is a broader term. Does my application work? Can I actually log on? Um, even to the point where HR departments are using it, right? You can uh, bring your own device or get a, a device of your choice, whether that's a MacBook or a Windows Surface or you know what, what, what have you. And it's, it's all part of that, that ecosystem where, you know, uh, IT admins and, and HR departments want people to be happy with the experience altogether, not just the device, but everything you do, which, is, which widens its scope a lot, right? How do you know your applications are working? How do you know that somebody with uh, a shorty internet connection at home has a pleasant user experience? How, how do you do these things? It's complicated. So how do you feel that uh, login VSI helps with that? So um, without trying to go into uh, the, the marketing slides here too much, <laughs> um, for, for, for us, user experience is all about um, something that's happening now in the market that's called shift left, right? Making sure that everything's ready before the real user is starting to log on. And, and shift left puts more of that power to the user as well, right? So let's say you have a device that comes in from the factory. It's being sent to somebody's home directly. How do you know your applications are on there? They should be, right? But do they work? How do you make that first time experience better? So, um, not just on your remote device, by the way, also in the data center. Every time you make a change, are, are you going to check if all of your 500 applications still work? It's, it's a tedious task that you know can be done by computers easily. So that's also one of the things that, that we saw a really big uptick in like, hey, load testing is nice, it's important, we get it, but let's just figure out first if it works all together. So that the change process there is changing. And it's also what we see in the market, right? The pace of changes has uh, increased rapidly, right? Just last year, Microsoft has sent you 1,280 or 1260, I'm doubting that now, uh, just bug fixes and security updates. It's a crazy amount, right? And yeah. that that's just Microsoft. And believe me, it's going to be more this year and the year after. And that forces you to think about things differently because now we might think, hmm, three changes a day. That's a lot. But if we look at big guys like Amazon, but I'm also sure for, for Azure and, and other big parties, 
DevOps and change management, they, they do a change on average every 11 seconds on their production systems. Never, well, quote unquote, never goes down, right? <laughs> so if, if they can get to those numbers and we're still at, you know, one change every three days, I think there's a lot of uh, improvement there. And that's where the, the gap that at Login VSI we try to fill. Hey, how can you make that process better without affecting user experience, right? It should always work. Very good. And and how do you go about doing that then with with uh, with Login VSI? Is the what's what's the the, the process? Yeah. So uh, Login VSI is, is the company name for maximum confusion. We also had a product that was named that way, which is now slowly being replaced by which Login most Enterprise. of us remember yeah. who've <laughs> yeah. been in the EU space for exactly. a long time. So, you know, as you so, as you mentioned earlier, you know, uh, uh, you know, load testing. We all did load testing um, back in the day. So, but as it's, yeah, and yeah. it's it's what the company is built off, and that's what a lot of people are still doing with uh, with our products today. Um, but I would recommend that if you're starting to do uh, to do this testing today, start simple. Start with your application tests because it's it's so ridiculously easy. We scan your image or desktop or whatever you have for all of the applications you have. We put them in our product. Our robot users will automatically start. Um, uh, all of these applications, see if it works, give you a nice report like, hey, these 200 work, these, well, five are broken. And uh, now let's make a change and see if you stay at these same numbers, right? It's 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 hours uh, of work to set up, uh, including all of your applications, and then just to run it, it. You know, it's an automated task. So, you know, seconds, just read the report. And that already significantly improves your uh, user experience. We know that 76% of IT problems, a change is is the original cause of that, right? If you if you never touch anything, it'll probably work for a long while. Unfortunately, in in our connected world today, with many software vendors sending you updates every two weeks, or software as a service, you know, applications that change continuously, I would start there with your application tests. Then you can go on to Application infrastructure load testing, still very interesting. How many uses can I put on a box? What if I you know, take, take a different box or make a change? Still big impacts there. Um, but also what if I move to the cloud? What instance do I pick, right? You can pick an Azure instance that's cheap. You can pick an Azure instance that's ridiculously expensive with GPUs and everything. But how many users can I fit on that instance before it starts to slow down, right? And What's the most cost-effective scenario for me? This becomes even more interesting when you put Windows 10 Enterprise Multi-Session in the mix. Because first of all, Enterprise Multi-Session load testing becomes a thing, which is very important to get that instance size right. Otherwise, it's it's just not feasible from a cost perspective. But also application compatibility testing comes back because many applications we run into and people never call me when they work, right? They only call me when there's problems. So <laughs> of course. My, my focus is a little bit narrow there, but <laughs> there are a lot of really bad applications out there that just don't work well on multi-user operating systems. They put data and program files in local machine keys, and it, it, it just doesn't work. But as an IT admin, you do not want to check all of your 500 applications before you do that, right? So... That, that moves us to the cloud. And then the last test that I find really cool to do is you, you leave it running. So rather than doing a test with 500 users, you say, hey, let's keep a handful of these guys just you know working 24-7, 365 on my production systems, whether that's the data center on-prem, whether that's in the cloud, whether that's multi-cloud from different, you name it, that can all be done. And it's, it's really cool to see what these robots pick up because they're really sensitive to, to changes in, in performance. Okay, that's really good. So, so what you're saying is, you don't just. This is not just a one-off process. This is a continuous process to to kind of measure your the user experience consistently. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it it all starts with uh, with tests, but it, the the circle is only complete when you keep on testing because, like I said, software as a service applications they change all the time, yeah. right? Or or a component just fails. Uh, mm. Or somebody did that change that they didn't tell you about. It's it's all, you know, it, things are going to happen. Um, so you still need to test in production. Uh, you that's also why you know you still need monitoring, right? It's it, 
you still want to know if everything is buzzing okay. Just the fact that monitoring doesn't tell you if, if user experience on, on a CPU level is great. Um, you know, that, that's, that's all, uh, all part of the game for me. So start early, shift left, but keep it running in, uh, in production. And the, the fun thing is that um, this is running on all of your agile well, devices, or software. <laughs> it's, it's it's all about software today, right? But absolutely, if, if you're running agile endpoints, is that the uh, that's what I should perfect? Call it? Yeah, yeah, that's if exactly. If you're running agile endpoints, <laughs> our software is actually already baked in, so agile yeah. also sees this importance, and you can just run them as an endpoint to simulate user activity, which I think is is really cool. Yeah, no, no, no. I, 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 I agree. Um, I, I think it's a really cool feature that um, you know, extends the capabilities of our operating system. And as you said, you know, we, we've seen the increase in um, importance of user experience. So it's it's vital that. And as I said, instead of having to spin up, you know, whatever amount of VMs or have physical hardware to do the t- the testing, you can just use ITEL devices, which you know, generally you can repurpose any kind of old x86 hardware to, to run our operating system so you know you know there's a cost saving there so yeah so yeah so um ha- have you seen any applications you can't monitor well we rather call it test test um, sorry yes apologies <laughs> yes test yes. No, no monitoring, worry, no monitoring worry. monitoring's a, different yeah so, test. yeah so th- yeah we're often confused with that so that's you know um th- that that's our our life um, so we also don't compete with monitoring, right? We might be uh, sharing the same uh, wallet uh, within companies, but it, it is definitely something different. Now, you can test every application. However, little little asterisks, sometimes it's just a, a little bit harder. So um, if you have really old applications that have built without any principles of software development, sometimes it is hard to get into them and get that feedback. Uh, where we sometimes say, well, it's just not economically viable to do it. But when we internally run, you know, our, our hackathons or, or, or things like that, there aren't really limits to what, what you can't do anymore, right? Because we look at it from the user perspective. So can a user manipulate the application? Then probably we can as well. Yeah. The question then becomes, you know, how much time does it take you and how reliable is it? And um, unless it's really your most important line of business application, which you should reconsider if you can't even test if it works. <laughs> um, we're, we're sort of okay typically. We're just you know, not doing all of your applications or all steps in every application. It, it, it's really about that bulk. Let's see if, you know, can we log on? Can we actually start that application? Interaction is only one of the later steps um, that we mostly recommend really for your business critical. Right? If this application is not here, we're out of business. For a hospital, can I pull up patient records on the um, first aid, right? That's critical. They can find your allergies, make a test for that. If they can't invoice somebody, you know, that's very unfortunate. But if it doesn't work for a day, that's fine. On the other hand, there's many applications that are being used only one day in the month that are critically important. So those you want to test continuously. Mm. Uh, one that I like to use as an example there is the, um, uh, our finance department has an application. They use it one time per month, but it's to Is it Hyperion by any chance? <laughs> I, I have no idea what it's called, but it's, it's I, used I, to, yeah. to pay out the salaries. So they only use it once a month, but I <laughs> find it very, very important. very important that it works. <laughs> so they, they test that continuously if that application is available and if it would work, if they would go through the process. So that on payday, everybody is getting their money. And that's also... Well, not maybe not user experience, but if you look at the whole digital employee experience, right, the bigger bucket where even HR is involved, that's important. You want to pay people on time for the work they've done, yeah. Because you know that, that that all fits into being a good employer. So that's why you know digital experience and user experience. There, it's 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 a big uh, big story. And have you seen any particular um, verticals where you've seen an increase in the usage of your your software during like COVID? Um, well, <laughs> f- funny enough, uh, almost every industry except for uh, aviation. I don't know why. <laughs> I wonder um, why. <laughs> um, so it, it, it's it's all over the place, but uh, the usual suspects are government, healthcare, yeah, finance. 
and 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 they went they went big. So we saw that finance was when it comes to it most prepared. Yeah, because they, they had the bigger budgets. They kind of had things in place, but also they found their their limits. And what we see now is that all of these environments are running at what they can maximally at, at their maximum performance, their maximum RPMs, right? So making a change for those guys is extremely scary now. Like, yeah, we're we're running on all of our capacity, right? There's no margin for errors. Normally, if our work from home system wouldn't work for a day, eh, people would go to the office, right? We'd, we'd accept it. Now we have 5,000 people working at home. So we don't accept if it's down for a day or an hour, mm. right? So the, um, the stakes are different, I guess. Okay. Yeah, no, that, that makes sense. And as I said, it, 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 as you said, it, it's different across different industries. There's different demands. Um, where do you see um, user, user experience um, going in, in terms of, you know, being able to measure it um, and kind of judge how, how, what experience are the end users are having? Yeah, that's that's an easy question again with a, a complicated answer, at least from from an engineering perspective, right? And uh, yeah, we're both engineers, so that's that's typically the answer you're gonna get. It that's depends, um, but I think we will start to look less at technical metrics. So yeah. in the past, I you know I would do user experience research, and the first thing I would pull up is a CPU metric next to it, like hey. That, does this make sense? What what internet connection is that person on? Where are they? What type of device are they using? And what we're seeing is that all of those technical metrics, what does a CPU mean in the cloud? It, 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 is it just me on there or do I get the same one all the time? Because that's mm. one of the things we're seeing in Azure. You, you have a machine, you have an instance type, you shut it down, turn it on again, you get a different CPU architecture. Mm-hmm. What? <laughs> Which, and it makes sense, right? It's just what they have available in different data centers. Yeah. But from a user experience view, suddenly uh, looking at my CPU doesn't tell me too much anymore. So I think that uh, w- without going into technology, we will start to focus more on what people are actually seeing and how we can mimic that uh, rather than saying, oh, my CPU is running at 80%. Because in, in theory, in the cloud, I would like to run my CPUs at 99% all the time Yeah, but from a cost perspective. Probably for a user experience perspective, uh, and um, that also involves things like scaling up, scaling down. Right? Do you take large machines uh, with with many users on there, or small machines? So you can easily uh, um, recycle them when they're empty. So it's 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 all of those things that start to play um, a, a big role, and it's also one of the things you see. A lot of questions about if you look at new technology like Windows Virtual Desktop, there's a lot of questions about scaling, depth mode, breadth mode, auto scaling, um, th- third parties sitting on top of that, like for example, Nerdio. Yep. Um, but also the, the more mature or older um, uh, solutions like Citrix Cloud or VMware Horizon Cloud on Azure for whatever the name is. <laughs> Um, th- th- these are things they struggle with because a machine is not instantly ready, right? You, it's not like you turn it on and 10 seconds later, users can log on. No, it, mm. it, it takes a while. So user experience becomes this thing that you should actually predict almost like the weather. And also something that I think um, you can play with. Sometimes you don't want to offer a nine. Maybe a four is okay, right? If I, the, the, the call center user always uh, is in trouble in, in my life because we say, well, they, they have one simple application, data entry. They don't need a lot of user experience, right? A four could be okay for them. Well, if you're doing AutoCAD, 3D thingies, uh, Confusion 360, you, you might need a GPU and you expect a nine. But what we have to remember is that going from an eight to a nine in performance probably also means doubling the cost. Right, so at some t- up, at some moment in time, a spreadsheet warrior is going to come in and say, "Yeah, we're going to go for the eight instead of the nine. Yeah, so it's 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 a balance. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, just trying to think. Of, uh, finally, what excites you that's in tech at the moment? Is there anything outside of 
user experience that is really exciting to you? Um, well, in, <laughs> in tech in general, I uh, just started 3D printing, so I, I have no time in my life anymore. Uh, <laughs> that, that excites me a lot, doing um, uh, a lot of tinkering outside of my uh, uh, outside of IT. Mm-hmm. But if it's if it's within IT, um, I'm I'm curious to see you know the the next level of technology. How how is this working from home thing going to change our lives? Uh, I'm I'm loving it. I live far away from the office. I go there every, once every two weeks, and yep. it's cool. And and work is changing, right? It's more like a, a going to Starbucks now to meet with your colleagues kind of thing. Just get <laughs> catch up on some things, and that's not tech, but it's you know I believe that we. Uh, can support the technology behind it. I'm very much interested in that. Um, do, do you do you think we're going to see more immersive tech when it comes to communication, such as you know AR or VR, to so you know or hollow projection or whatever? You know, probably. Would it be cool? Yes. Would you need it? No. <laughs> uh, I mean, it, it, this this kind of thing works it, for me. It it doesn't replace face-to-face meetings and it's what what most people say um nothing beats drinking drinking a beer after an event you know and and hearing the real story not the marketing uh uh, slides Mm -hmm. um and and what i'm really curious about when it comes to that is that well both of us we've we've built our um our, our company but also our own reputation on getting these introductions getting these handshakes getting to know people all over the world right yeah and this is something that i'm thinking about like what if you start in it today and you sit at home you never meet your colleagues that's okay you you have them on the phone every now and then or on teams but uh, how, how big does your circle get right and uh, i actually started um on uh, on the 23rd of march will be my year year anniversary at IGEL and it was completely virtual I have I haven't met I've met one person from IGEL since I've joined in person so I I can personally say it's been a very strange experience um but I have got to know some of my colleagues quite well um but obviously you know you you can't beat the in person um you know as you said in the bar after a conference talking away on different and the different things that come up and that kind of thing. So, yeah, no, I, I can understand, but someone coming brand new to tech starting in that's a, that must be really scary. I have to say, because I, I, you just miss that interaction. And, but we are going to see that more and more because we've already seen that shift from, you know, Oh, you can only say, you know, it's a job role. It can only be in London. Now it's like, it doesn't matter where you are like, you know, so we're going to have to see this shift. And I think it's going to change, not just where we work, but it's going to check, change our cities, our towns, everything like this is, you know, there's been numerous quotes about, you know, what drove digital transformation was COVID. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it's, Let's see. I mean, they're they're doing some experiments with with small events here again in the in the Netherlands. It's going to take a long while before, um, I believe, we're doing something again like like VMworld with twenty five thousand people. Now, yeah. it's, it doesn't have to be that big for me, but there's always you know this this group of people that you get to know and that you can come call sometimes. Like uh, you, for example, hey, I'm doing I'm doing a, a vodcast, right? Can, I, yeah. can you help me out? It's be, because we have these these networks, and that's. That's where I'm hoping to see some, you know, breakthroughs where, especially the new guys, uh, how can we help them out? Because the, the community has helped me out a lot, tremendously, both personally and, and the company. So, how, uh, you know, how can we give that back? How do we bring the next generation into the fold, so, so to speak? Yep. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And I think, I think, as you said, part of that is, is getting back to the, our in-person events, such as, you know, uh, whether it be something like, you know, a small Citrix user group or um, something bigger like E2E or, you know, Synergy or Summit or, or VMworld or, or AWS, what's AWS one called? Uh, or Ignite or any of these things like, you know, hopefully in 2022, all of these things will be in person again. And, we can get because obviously you, you you lose so much from the experience. Now you know we have seen quite a bit of innovation around how we do g- digital conferences, and there's been some really cool stuff around that. But I, I yeah, I, I get where you're coming from. Well, I have to say that's that's been really great, Mark. Um, I appreciate your time. Um, as um, I think you know, 
uh, as we said, you know, login VSI is 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 part of the IDEL OS, so it, it's very simple to get up and running with. Um, you know, login enterprise helps with that whole um. Uh, user experience and being able to look at your applications, whether it's from, um, you know, when you're just starting out on a greenfield site or just continuously monitoring. So, you know, you're constantly improving that user experience. So thank you very much for your time. No worries. Thank you. Okay.